What's up Covalence friends? Today we're going to be learning a very easy way to benchmark your code and figure out how to make your code as performant as possible. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're using a very simplistic example here. We're just having an index.html, an app.js, and an app.css. There's really nothing in the CSS. We're just styling a button. And we have our app.js, which is really just hooking up an event listener to the only thing that's in the DOM, which is this big button called benchmark. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to just kind of do a very simplistic example, but I think it's going to be powerful enough to explain the concept. So we're gonna create three arrays. So we're gonna call it R1, R2, and R3. And they're just gonna be empty arrays. And so we wanna kind of showcase the ability to call this console.time function, which is really gonna be our utility for benchmarking different functions or uh, processes or whatever really you, know, you want to actually benchmark uh, to try and you know, get a better sense of you know, the most performant or fastest way to accomplish something, right? Because we all know JavaScript is an interpreted language and it runs in real time, right? So at runtime, it's interpreting all of the code, right? So you wanna make sure your JavaScript is performant and it doesn't you know, end up causing you know, hiccups in the UI or anything like that. So we're gonna first push, we're gonna first test a push function. So we're just gonna push a bunch of elements to an array. And so let's go ahead and just create a for loop. So we're gonna say for let i equal zero, i is less than or equal, well, i is less than or equal to, let's say um, 100,000 plus plus i. And we're just going to r1.push i and then we're going to time end the push so basically you're labeling your time and time end here and so when you call the time end function with the same label as the time function it's going to then timestamp that it's going to give you the time it took in milliseconds or seconds or whatever and it's going to do that based off of the label that you're inputting. So basically the time end stops the timer, which is started when you call console.time. All right, and so what we're gonna do now is we're going to kind of copy this because we're gonna run three different functions. We're gonna run a push, we're gonna run an unshift, and we're going to run a splice. So we're basically gonna create three identical arrays using three different methods, right? And we're gonna see which one is the best way to do it. And so with unshift, we actually have to go the other way. So let's make sure we do 100,000, that's 10,000, 100,000 all the way down to zero. And we have to do greater than or equal, and we're gonna do minus minus i, there we go. And finally with splice, you're actually going to do our, oh, we gotta make sure we change this too, so r three, and we're still going up, but we're actually going to splice the value at i. We're gonna delete no objects, but then we're going to pop i back in there. All right, so this should go ahead and we should be able to actually run this now. And so let's go ahead and open this up. We're gonna reveal in File Explorer and we're going to pop it open. All right, so we have our benchmark button. We opened up our console. And when we actually benchmark this, we can actually see all of the milliseconds it took here. So you can see that push took 4.89 milliseconds, unshift took 2.02 milliseconds, and splice took 5.1479. Now let's go ahead and we're just going to also log out our arrays real quick. because right, we wanna make sure that we actually did this right and that we have all of the arrays looking the same, right? So, all right, so it looks like we actually did this backwards. So we have this unshift is completely wrong. It actually unshifts everything that way. So let's go ahead and make sure, oh, we have the push here, that's why. Um, so make sure we actually change that function. There we go. All right, so we can see there's a massive difference now. We actually have all three arrays identical here and we accomplished the same thing, but you can see it's completely different time. And that's why I knew something was wrong because I knew unshift is 
way slower. Um, but you can see that push is obviously the fastest. And no matter how many times we run this, we realistically should get almost the same results, right? Where you know push is basically two times faster than splicing, which makes sense. Splicing is a completely different operation and push is meant for this. And unshift is the slowest because you're actually placing elements in the beginning. And so I'm sure it has something to do with the way you're actually having to allocate memory, but you're actually popping elements in the beginning of the array as opposed to just tacking them onto the end. So in terms of actually adding things to an array, you can see off the bat, you definitely want to push. Next best option is splice. Last best option is definitely unshift. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can obviously add elements to an array. Highly recommend you try them out. And, uh, and let us know, you know your favorite. Maybe you know the fastest way to add stuff to an array. But again, this was really just an example. I highly recommend you play around with these console.time and console.time end functions. And make sure you benchmark your code and try and figure out, obviously, the most performant code because performance is important. All right, so I hope you learned a little something today. Most people don't know about that console.time function or that console.time end function. So hope that helped you out. Hope you get to use it in your own applications. And definitely let us know some feedback if you liked it, disliked it, want to know more. And uh, drop something in the comment section below. Check out our merch at the merch store. And also check out some of our new course offerings. We have a new membership offering as well. So be sure to check that out. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think.